Hello, welcome back. It's Monday afternoon and um, I'm out here goofing around. I kind of missed out on things this morning. I was uh, doing some other things. But um, I, got, uh, I got the boring bars uh, sharpened on the cutter grinder. And uh, I'll do a lot more on the cutter grinder too. And the cutter grinder is going to be really important for this uh, horizontal mill here. And uh, I'm really looking forward to doing a lot of uh, cutter grinding uh, uh, for this machine. And uh, things are uh, coming right along. Now, I've got uh, uh, four antique machines. And uh, this, this mill's one of them, uh, early 1940s. And the cutter grinder, I think, is 1942. And then the Morris Moore speed out there is uh, early 40s also, about 1943, something like that. There's an identical one on the battleship New Jersey. That's the Morris Moore speed uh, drill press. And uh, I was uh, looking more closely at that machine. And uh, it does indeed have a precision spindle. It's got a three ball bearings in the nose and then a Timken uh, type zero at the rear end of the spindle. And it's, a, I guess you'd call it a cartridge spindle similar to a bridge board or the more jig bore. It's um, many uh, radial drill presses use uh, Timken bearings, large ones that are in place, then a shaft passes through those. So anyway, I'm looking forward to doing some uh, interesting uh, operations on the radial drill, some that you don't really uh, associate with the radial drill. You can do line boring and, and some other things with, uh, with that machine. But uh, I wanted to uh, demonstrate the uh, Axelson spindle reverse. I, I, I'm out there kind of dinking around with stuff outside because uh, it, it's a nice day. It doesn't look like it's going to rain and it's warm so I can um, uh, clean these things up. You know, I, I, I clean the oil off of them and uh, wipe them back down and uh, you know, generally take care of it. But uh, on a warm day like this, I'll put some power to that axle and then uh, run the headstock a little bit. And that's, that's what I've done uh, today. So let's go have a look at that stuff. Okay. Now, my four antique machines is this uh, cutter grinder. Oh, about 1942. This uh, mill could be uh, somewhere in that that era too. That cutter grinder is a navy machine but ended out at Hanford. Okay, here's a Morris Moore speed, early uh, 1940s. See how easy that is to move? Oh, that's sweet. Okay, now I'm gonna um, demonstrate the uh, axis and uh, spindle here. Oh, I'm gonna run right back in here. Kind of cleaning stuff up out here a little bit. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get the motor running in this milling machine here in neutral. Just to give it a, a little bit of uh, a boost because uh, my rotary phase converter is in the basement of the house and it's got all this line and stuff. So this should work better. Yeah, I've got a line going out that way, so here we go. Try again. Got all kinds of boosted power. See, this thing's uh, looking good there. You know, no further rust or anything happening here. I keep light bulbs going. Okay, I'll get you mounted here. And uh, this is pretty cool. The spindle uh, is set at 151 RPM. Get it in neutral and I'll start it up and uh, we'll uh, reverse the spindle like we're threading or tapping at 150 uh, RPMs. Here we go. Okay. Get it going forward. 
Now I'm going to push it directly to reverse. I'm going to pull it back to forward. It doesn't complain too much doing that. Um, that's a that's a fairly good clip for uh, the threads I'll be cutting on this machine. 150 RPM, so I'll be cutting generally large and coarse threads on this. And uh, it can take some wear and tear off that monarch uh, in that regard anyway. So I'm gonna reverse it again. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty good action. Uh, you know, most lathes um, that are tool making lathes anyway will have a, a lead screw reverse. And uh, this machine here um, has a, a full spindle reverse. Uh, the motor didn't change directions, it's got a reversing clutch. I believe they called it a shipper clutch. It goes from uh, forward then to reversing gears and it reverses the uh, spindle with the gears and the clutch. So when it's in forward, it's running through the normal gears. When you put it into uh, reverse, it kicks in some extra gears in the back there that reverses the spindle. It's pretty unusual. Now the Monarch 10 E reverses the spindle too, but you know it's through belts and the and the direct current motor. So this is kind of an unusual uh, machine that uh, reverses the spindle uh, with gears. So anyway, let's see how we're looking there. That looks pretty good. So I'm. Um, Getting the paint off both of these machines, and um, and I'm going to start getting them painted up, get some primer on them, and uh, start uh, getting ready to move these things inside. The um, nice thing about this right now that I'm grateful for is that these uh, these machines are sitting on the ground. We're not very far from it, you know. So um, this uh, radial drill weighs 6,000 pounds, but with uh, due care, it can be uh, moved with two pallet jacks. So that's uh, what's going to happen there. And uh, I uh, will leave the table on there for ballast. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing when you move a, a radial drill press is uh, you want to fix this part here. So I'll, uh, put, I'll either put some iron or uh, build a wood cradle that'll solidly uh, uh, hold this to uh, keep it from swinging side to side and possibly uh, tip it off. But um, this uh, drill some of them I'm told that you know you have to bolt it down and uh, I was reading about this drill and uh, it uh, it's heavy enough in the base so if the arms all the way over to the side it won't uh, it won't tip over um, with the head all the way out and in fact I tried I tried that I, I chained it to the truck and I got up on the head and jumped up and down, and I couldn't get it to woggle a bit. So um, I don't have any problem um, with this machine uh, swinging it around or using it. I just, uh, they seem to have built it so uh, it's not going to tip over. And uh, I was kind of worried about that.
but uh, everything about a, a radial drill press is uh, a, a little bit difficult <laughs> when you're thinking about moving them and, and stuff. Here's the electrical stuff here, it's those old switches, but uh, I think they're going to be fine. They, uh, you know, the rats didn't get into the electrical compartment here, and uh, kind of a, a rare thing is it's already 220 volt, and, and so was the axle sink. Usually machines I pick up are uh, wired high voltage, so... I don't know. It seems like a never-ending project, but I'm actually, uh, you know, kind of winding things up. And I'm really, you know, I'm really excited about that because uh, uh, it's really fun to make parts. But I'll probably, uh, I don't know, you know, have some machine I'm working on, I guess. I don't know. I'll figure it out. You know, it's like, oh. But uh, these four uh, antique machines are going to be a lot of fun for me. The, uh, they're like machines uh, from the generation before me, from my dad's and, and possibly my grandpa's generation too. So uh, I'll get back and uh, thanks for checking me out today. Bye.